Hey everybody, you are watching CornerstoneGlobal.tv and this is the program Sundays on Mondays. And what a great day we're going to have today. Hope your Sunday was good, but this is Monday. It's another day. And our special guest today is going to be Banning Leapshire from Jesus Culture. You're going to hear some Jesus Culture worship. We're going to be talking about relevant events uh, that apply to our nation, to young people. Benning Leapshire is a great guy. He really doesn't need any introduction. He is the founder of Jesus Culture, served there at Bethel Church under Pastor Bill Johnson for 10 years. He's still under him, but they're getting ready to do some new things. And man, their new project, Unstoppable Love, is taking over everywhere. And anyway, he's coming to join with us here in just one moment. So you have time. You have a moment to text somebody, tell somebody, Facebook it, get it out there, because we're going to talk for a few minutes. You're going to hear a little bit of Jesus Culture music right here on Sundays on Mondays. Like, where did the whole Jesus culture thing come out of? Well, I I, um, I was on staff. I started when I was 19 at Bethel uh, and with Bill Johnson. And, and he, um, so I was on staff for 18 years. When I, uh, and then in 1999, I was 23, we started a youth conference. We called it Jesus Culture. And you it started was, it there in Reading? Yeah, in Reading. So we did a, just kind of a, a youth conference for the church. And, you know, we had, I think I counted volunteers, everybody. We had like 500 come and we were yeah, stoked. Sure, and, sure. and we started noticing that there was something significant with the worship in the gatherings. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I don't know if everybody would know this, but so what Jesus culture is most known for is the worship. And those two main worship leaders, which would be Kim and Chris, yeah. Chris, who's 31, was 12. He was a junior high okay, kid. Now how, do you, how do you say Chris's last name? Kilala. Yeah, Kilala. Kilala. Like, I got it now. But I'm just reading it before, you know, and I'm and I'm always just calling him Chris, but I think he's fantastic, man. Huh? Yeah. I know. It's so funny. I know Kilala. Yeah, well, Chris was just a junior high kid. Chris was in my wedding when he was 14. Uh -huh. He was like uh, my first spiritual son. Kim, who's 32, had just been saved, had come when she was 18, was part of our like youth leadership team. You know so, you only have like one more year to tell people how old she is until you start getting beat yeah, up. For I it. know, I know. It's it's this close. I know. Yeah, I just I want know. to tell you that. But it's such a cool part of the story. They, uh, <laughs> they've been with us a long time, and we were putting it, they were leading worship, and there was something really significant happening with it. So we were doing conferences, and we'd start, and we said, let's record a CD. I mean, this was not till 2005, I guess, 2006. We said, let's record what's going on in worship in these yeah. gatherings. It was powerful. We, we, we always had a sense that God's really showing up powerfully in worship. And, and uh, so we started recording some CDs, and somebody stuck a video up on YouTube, and, and then it just kind of blew up from there. So, Well, man, it's crazy, and I'm so glad that you guys have recorded it. And it's been, I mean, it's been so great for everybody everywhere. I mean, it's just, you know, it's really, it's, it's something that calls people to a higher level and it's, it's saying something, you know, it's not just good music, it's great music, but it's saying something. And uh, I mean, you guys are you just everywhere. I think I went to your, the, the Jesus Culture Facebook page the other day, and you guys are like pushing like 2 million friends, man. It's bizarre. I, it's bizarre. And we still feel like, I still just feel like a youth pastor with a handful of youth leaders who are trying to figure out how to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But how great is that, man? So, so the thing is, you know, your passion is really to lead like a prayer movement. A lot, a lot of people may not know that. Like, you well, want people... well, ultimately what I want to see uh, happen is nations transformed and cities saved. What, what we're really passionate about is seeing cities saved and nations transformed. In order to see that happen, what we know is, is, is we felt called to ignite a prayer movement, to ignite worship in the hearts of people, and ultimately to raise up leaders and, that carry the presence of God and flood the earth with them. So uh, prayer is a huge part of that for us. 
Well, um, you know, as you're, as you're going around, are you seeing signs of revival? And I, and I say this because, um, you know, you have people that are pessimistic, people that are optimistic, people saying that we're falling apart, people saying that we're going, you know, what's your take on what you're saying? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because people are, many people are discouraged by the state of what's happening. I, I tell them at some level they're hanging out with the wrong people. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, it's very weird. Like, of course, if you look at America, there are definitely some things, obviously it doesn't, you don't have to be prophetic to understand. Sure. Just have to pay attention. Yeah. That there are some, there are some dark things going on, but at the same time, I've been around a a generation now. We've been working with youth and young adults for the past 20 years. I've never seen the level of hunger. I've never seen the level of consecration. I've never seen the level of commitment. And I I, I am not exaggerating because we'll we'll go on tours and go hit, you know, 10 cities. We did three tours this last uh, spring. Will every city we go to, every city, the hunger and the passion for God. Yeah. It it is, it is, it's electric. Okay, so what what, what can churches do to facilitate that, you know? What can churches do to say, okay, if, if, if young people are hungry, what can we do about that? Well, yeah, it's a great question. <laughs> I, I think that we have to make room for God encounters. I, I think for me, I, I got lit up because I encountered the presence of God. Yeah. And I think that I think that everybody wants to be everybody wants to give themselves to the cause of Christ and the earth. Everybody wants to be passionate for God. But we kind of get disconnected from that. And I think that when we allow people to enter into the presence of God, when, again, I'm, I'm for organization, I'm for programs, I'm for all that type of stuff. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, we believe if we're not, if people are not encountering God in our ministry, we're not doing our job. If they walk away talking about how great the music was or how great the lights were, whatever else, they have to encounter God. And when they encounter God, something gets awakened inside of them. Yeah. The reality is, is if we're going to see a nation awakened, our, <laughs> our lives have to be awakened. Yeah. And so our lives are awakened when we encounter God. And, and what, what, what we're finding is this, that, that, that this generation, they are saying yes fully to God. And I'm telling you, I'm with them and I'm seeing it. They are giving themselves fully. Uh, and they're saying, I will give myself to the cause of Christ in the earth. But it's coming because they're encountering the yes that Jesus has for them. Mm-hmm. The reality is, is we first loved him because he first loved us. We, all, we cannot love him apart from encountering his love. And when we encounter the yes that Jesus has for us, really encounter that in his presence. Okay, well, let me pick, this, let me, just let me pick the side of the coin. Let me pick the side of the coin here that... Um, just to play the advocate, not the devil's advocate, but no, just the no, other side. I'm with you. Be- because what I'm hearing, because you and I have had conversations about multi generational ministry, and both of us yes, believe man. in that. Yes. And um, sometimes the thing that I hear from uh, existing leadership in churches is that yes, the young people are excited; they want to have room for God, but some of them uh, don't want to really be planted. They want to go to two or three different four churches, or some of them want to sign up but not show up yeah. or, you know, the same kind of things. So what are we, what are we going to say to, to bridge this generation uh, gap? Well, listen, let me, let me say one thing. Let me just give you some context for us. Uh, th- the message that we preach that, that I believe, I believe ultimately it's Mordecai's fathering Esther's that save nations. Okay. That it's Moses and Joshua connected that see victory. So the reality is, is I can call a generation to be passionate for God. If they are not connected to fathers and mothers, it will be short-lived and it won't work. Sure. And, and the other thing that we see is there's been a swing where, um, you know, purpose-driven life. Purpose-driven life is this massive selling book because Rick Warren comes along and, you know, tells, an, uh, tells a generation, you know, an older generation, hey, you can actually uh, – you, you can actually live with some passion and some purpose. Yeah. Well, the younger generation now, they are having to kind of recalibrate a little bit where that's all that was ever asked them. What's your passion? So now it's like, now it's like, a, a, you know, well, I don't really do that because it's not my passion. We are drilling these guys with, it is about serving. Yeah. It is about being plugged into community that if you're really going to give yourself fully and if you're really going to be healthy, 
It is about serving. It is about being in community. It is about being undercovering. We don't even ask them sometimes anymore what your passion is. They've been asked so many times what their passion is. I'm like, listen, your goal is to be faithful. That's what you're going to stand before God one day and be faithful. So, you know, it's the kind of not either or for us. It's like, yeah, sons sons and daughters prophesying at the same time. Old men are dreaming dreams. Yes. Young men, men it it should be happening. I I like the story of the... um, the feeding of the 5,000 because Jesus has all these existing leaders with him. Yes. And, but none of the existing leaders has exactly what they need to feed the 5,000. But somebody yes. said there is a lad. There, yes. There's an emerging leader over here, but the emerging leader has to put what he has in the hands of the existing leaders. Yes. And, you know, it's this whole thing of the generations working together of yeah. honor and encouragement let, let those that have been doing it encourage those that will do it. Let those that will do it honor those who are doing it. And uh, it, it's, I, I love the way that I hear you addressing it because it seems to me that in some, in some psychology, in some theology, they say to reach the young people is almost to patronize them. It's almost to, yeah, no. um, it's almost like just give them what you think that they want. But, but you're challenging them. We don't have time for that. Listen, we, we do not have time to somehow, like we have to call a generation to give themselves fully to, uh, to what God is doing and, and require from them that they step up as leaders. We don't have time to kind of hold their hand. Like the, the hour we live in has some urgency to it. Yeah. These guys have to give themselves. And, and part of that biblically is, is they have to be connected to fathers and mothers in the community. They have to be connected there. In fact, they will have no authority if they're not. So when I come to a young person, I say, listen, you're called to change the world. You're called to see cities saved and nations transformed. I then immediately have to connect with them. That means you've got to get into the inner room of prayer. Like you have, there is things that you will get in the secret place that you can find nowhere else. Sure. You cannot go from you cannot go from conference to conference and get these. You have to find the secret place. Yeah. But the other thing is, is you have to get connected to community because that's where the Lord really builds a root system. Yeah. And you have to be undercovering because you have no authority apart from that. Yeah. Like I can send you all I want onto campuses and I can send you all I want into cities and realms of culture, but you have no authority if you're not connected to authority. Yeah. And so we, when we call them to change the world, the next move is we immediately begin to have to connect. There's some pieces here if you're going to be successful, though. Yeah, I love it, man. And I tell you what, you guys are doing such an awesome job. And um, I just want to kind of switch gears just for a moment and, and talk a little bit about the uh, music project uh, that has just come out because I was listening to some of it the other day, Unstoppable Love and, uh, the you know, the the praise song that Chris was singing, um, Sing Out, and the worship song, Your Name is Glorious by Kim Walker. But you know the thing, okay, so maybe this is just me talking, but the thing I love about it is because not only is it just like full-on Holy Spirit, beautiful sound lyrics, but it sounds great, and the video stuff is crazy. Well... (laughs) Yeah, 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 I don't even know. Thank you. I just thank you. That's very nice of you. We have, you know, it's what we have. I, 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 you know, I really believe that we've got, we have to be able to go after the presence of God with excellence and, uh, and really give him our best. And um, as long as our goal stays, we want people to encounter the presence of God. Sure. Um, then then I, I really have, a, we have a heart to, to do things with it. And man, it's out on Blu-ray and everything. Like yeah, you guys yeah, are just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It's like I, I, we can't get away from you. No, no, listen, we just come at you. We're just going to, any angle we can. No, it's out on Blu-ray and iTunes. And the responses we've gotten already uh, um, of people just saying, you know, just really encountering God through it just has made us so happy. And, I, and listen, as, 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 a, as a leader and kind of as a father of Kim and Chris and these guys, I just couldn't be more proud of what oh, God's doing through them. Happy. And the songs as well. Like I was, I was really impacted during the live recording at the conference. I encountered uh, uh, the beauty of the cross in a whole new way. And then as I, we listened to them for months as we're working on it before we release it, yeah. I was encountering just – I don't know how to describe it. I was so grateful for what Jesus did on the cross yeah. through this album. 
Yeah. And certain songs that they were writing that reminded me again of what Jesus did. So for me, for me personally, I, I, I it was a beautiful experience. Yeah, well, and that, that really says something because um, the few projects that I've worked on, it's almost like by the time you, you release it, you've heard, you've heard parts of it so many times that you're like, oh, you're almost tired of it, you know? So, uh, so true. Yeah, no, so it, it, it really is true. I, you're you're kind of, by the time it comes out, it doesn't feel, it's just very anticlimactic. Yeah. You're like, oh, we've got, yeah, I've been listening to this for four months now. Right, right. So you guys are going all over the place. Do you, do you have like a song that, that um, are the songs on it like seasonal to you? I, I mean, I hate to use the word favorite song, but when I buy something, I have a favorite song. And, and I've been known to just to like replay it and replay it until it drives everybody around That's me crazy. So funny. I do the exa- our personalities, I do the exact same thing. I have one song right now from a passion CD that came out. <laughs> I play that song anytime I go into prayer, anytime. Right. I mean, if because for whatever reason, I just I connect with God immediately when I put it on. So I'm like, why change it, man? I'm yeah, just, yeah. I eat the same meal at restaurants, though, too. <laughs> I, well, <laughs> I do the same thing. I know before I go, it's like this. This is what I want. That's why I went there. Yeah, totally. Like, I'm not like, uh, yeah. So I find that one song that is connecting me to the Lord, and then it's just, I will drill that song. Yeah. I'm just... Well, some people have really connected um, to uh, the, the song uh, Sing Out that Chris did. And so uh, we're going to jump into that song and come back and continue our conversation here. But hey, listen, guys, you're watching Sundays on Mondays. And this is kind of the stuff that Banning and I talk about on a Monday. So uh, sometimes it's good to have a little song to kind of lift you up. And we're going to go there in just a moment. You're watching CornerstoneGlobal.tv. You still have time to tell somebody, text somebody, send up a smoke signal, blow up a car, do something and tell somebody that if you log in at CornerstoneGlobal.tv, you can see Banning Leapshire talking and hear a little bit more about Jesus culture. But right now we're going to go into the song Sing Out by Chris Kilala. Kilala.
one of your voice. Hey guys, we are back right here on Sundays on Mondays, and we are talking today to Banning Leapshear. And uh, man, Jesus culture is just impacting uh, our generation and nations and cities, and I love it, love it, love it. And their new project is out, Unstoppable Love. And uh, man, it is just going everywhere, the DVDs and the concerts and... Um, what, what does it feel like to you? And, and, and I know, I'm not, because I know that you're not like enamored in an in in ungodly way with the success and the fame of it. But what does it feel like to see something that you started with a handful of people and just now it's just like, boom? Wow. It's, uh, it's super humbling for sure. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun. It really is a lot of fun. Like I, we get out with people and we see them worshiping God and giving themselves and going out in their campuses and schools and cities. And it's a lot of fun. Like I, I'm like, okay. this is what I was born for, but it's, it's really humbling as well just to kind of see the response the impact or the reports that we get around the world, like around the world that people send us reports about stuff that's happened to our ministry and, so, um, you know, it's fun. We narrowed our life down a while ago to, I want to do family, my personal family. I want to do family really well. And I want to get together with some friends and change the world. And that's what it feels like. It, 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 it's been a blast to be able to, the people that we work with, I just consider friends. We're out changing the world. And, um, and, and it's been fun and humbling at the same time. That's exciting. So how are you adjusting to um, this concept of now pastoring? Well, you know, we came out of a youth group. So I was part of a local church for 18 years. And Jesus Culture was really birthed out of a youth group. Like we were just, uh, I was a youth pastor. I had a handful of youth leaders yeah. and some youth kids. And we're like, hey, what can we do in the nations? What can we do in America to mobilize a generation? So it feels good now uh, to kind of get, get, get back to our roots. is isn't fully accurate, but to get back to that roots of we're local church people. Yeah. At the end of the day, we don't want to be itinerant ministers. We want to export fruit. Yeah. So when we say we want to raise up leaders that impact every realm of culture, I don't just want to preach that. We want to be doing that. Yeah. When we say we want to raise up a community of worshipers, when we want to raise up 
prayer, all that type of stuff. I want there to be local fruit impacting a local city. So for us, we're pretty excited about it. And it fits hand in hand with what we want to do. And for us, everything we do is about strengthening the local church. Right. Like if, if, if what we're doing isn't strengthening the local church and leaders, I don't want to do it. So yeah, yeah. it's exciting to get back. At, we're excited to be in Sacramento and do this. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this question because this is something that, that uh, some of our uh, guests have talked about from time to time because we're very much the same way in believing um, that all of the art should be used and music should be used and that God is, God is not calling everyone, though he's calling all of us to be a part of a faith community and a local church, he's not calling all of us. Some of us serve secularly or in the marketplace, entertainment, sports, politics, the arts, all those things. There seems to be a tension and... Um, maybe even more so in California because California has its own kind of culture that sometimes is a little bit kind of um, easy, easy believism. And then you have this draw into the arts. And I, and I see some, some leaders kind of capitulating to the culture, like, okay, well, that's just what you do. And others that are trying to just like, you know, fight the culture. So how is it that we embrace on both sides, the, the person and the church, the people who are called into arts, entertainment, media, politics, athletics, and yet challenge them to be also local church people? Yeah, well, I would say this. First of all, um, we're called uh, – this is what I believe. I believe that when Jesus said you're to disciple nations, he wasn't talking to a few select people. Yeah. He wasn't talking to a few select people to stand behind pulpits or write books. He was talking to the body of Christ. So the, the, the call to lead or disciple nations is not an elite group. It, it's for everyone. So 100% of the people that we, 100 of the people that will, will come to our church are called to, to lead and change the world. 97% of them will not do it the way I do it from behind a pulpit. Right. They're not called to lead from behind a pulpit. Right. They're called to lead in culture and society, which means as a church, we have to get better at sending that our, our definition of success cannot be how many people we gather on Sunday, but how many people we send on Sunday. Yeah. We say this at our own conferences that, you know, I love that people come to our conferences. My favorite part is when they leave. Sure. Like what I love is that they, that, that they're going back into their city. So yeah. we have to, so, but the local church piece so my, I want to raise up leaders and I want to send them into culture in the city, carrying the presence of God with revival to see transformation. The reality is, though, is I want to send leaders that are healthy and whole. Yeah. And, 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 and healthy, whole leaders come from community. Yeah. You find wholeness. You find health. You find courage. You, you find all that type of stuff is found in community. Independence and isolation are absolute killers for believers. And how long, how long do we have to see that until we actually believe that? It just is. And so this independent thing that's in America where it's like I'm on my own and I only need me and I don't need people and I don't like it when somebody tells me what to do or, or the messiness of community. I mean, yeah. community's messy. It just is. I love I, it when people say me and Jesus just have church in our house. Just, it's just not accurate. It's not biblical. Sure. Like you can't, that phrase of like, it's just me and Jesus. Yeah. I'm like, listen, I understand what you're saying. It's just not biblical. He right. didn't set it up with just you two. Yeah. So we talk about this type of stuff. And, and this is the phrase, David, um, th this is what we talk about. David was called to lead a nation. He was called to be in the castle. He was not prepared in the castle though. Right. He was prepared in the field. That, that inner room of prayer by himself with Jesus, he was prepared by serving, by really learning to serve a king that wasn't a great king, but learning to serve. And then he was thrown into a cave with a whole bunch of messed up men and had to go figure out community. So this whole thing of like, I want to be in the castle. I'm like, listen, you don't like you, you've got to go through the process of community. You have to go through the process of serving. You have to go through the process of establishing a, a secret history with the Lord. And, you know, you, and, and what happens is a lot of people, when they don't have community, what I'm seeing is that then when they hit a bump in the road, you know, the Bible says, woe unto the man who's alone when he falls. He doesn't have anybody to pick him up. And then you see somebody hit a bump in the road, midlife, sideways season, something tragic happens. That now they're going about trying to solve a long-term problem with short-term friends. Yes. They, don't, they don't have anybody that's there, you know, in their life and 
and th these, as and I like the way that you say it because I think we have to come to the realization as church people that community is messy, and it it doesn't mean it's ungodly. It doesn't mean that it's permissiveness. It means that it's messy. It means that that it's. I mean, every time you look through the scripture, uh, deliverance is is messy, man. It's it's plagues and and and, and things to bring deliverance, and um, I think we have to be able to articulate. Uh, against the arguments that people have so easily thrown. Somebody told me the other day, said, well, I don't, I don't go to churches because, you know, I think there are hypocrites in the church. I don't know exactly what that means. But I, I, I said to them, I said, no, I said, the music that you listen to has hypocrites in it. I said, so let's do it this way. You're, you're watching uh, this gangster rap video of a guy who lives in a mansion in Beverly Hills, gets in his Bentley, drives to the recording studio, sings a song, uses uses fake guns and fake bullets and fake blood, gets acting like he's a gangster, gets back in his Bentley and drives to his mansion. Okay, he's pretended like he was a gangster all day. But then our kids use real guns, real bullets, real blood. That's okay, so if we're gonna talk about hypocrites, come on. Yeah, and it, to, be, to be honest with you, ultimately I feel like, a couple things. One, we don't have a choice. The, the, you know, God's called a father for a reason, and this is the family of God for a reason. Yeah. Just because you think your brother is a hypocrite do, or, doesn't mean that somehow you can, like, separate. Like, this is a family. There's not, you don't have a choice. We are in this thing, and it is messy. Yeah. And, and listen, marriage is messy. Like, mar my wife, marriage is messy. But because I'm messy, I'm a, I'm a person with flaws and weaknesses and problems. I didn't even realize I was selfish till I got married. Right. All of that stuff comes up because I'm married and all of a sudden I realize this. But, so and then when one, you have kids. <laughs> yeah, one is this, is one, I don't think we have an option. The Lord's not giving us an option to like, well, they are hypocrites, therefore I disconnect. Yeah. That, doesn't, that doesn't work. But the, the second thing is this, is in 1 Peter 5, 5, it says, he's talking to elders and then he goes, younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. And then he goes and goes to everybody. Be submitted to one another yeah. and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. The concept is, is that when I submit my life to elders, when I submit my life to community, it's actually an act of humility. Sure. And the reason why it's an act of humility is because it's humiliating. Like it is, it, it, it's, it's, it's a messy part of things. But what happens is, is when I clothe myself with humility by making the hard choice of community, by being around people that are messed up, by being around people that have flaws, by being around people that have weaknesses, by experience of my own. When I, when I, when I stay in that connection though, grace, grace comes into my life yeah. because there's humility there. And as much as I don't want to, this is going to sound harsh, but it's the truth. Whenever we disconnect from community, it's ultimately pride. Whatever you want to say about it. When, even when I say there are hypocrites there, I am positioning myself above them and saying, and saying I don't deal with that. Yeah, I'm you greater than they are. Yeah. Yes, and so I position myself. Anytime I'm critical, yeah. anytime I'm critical, even of leadership or whatever else, I am saying I would do it better than you would. And I think, I think why it becomes dangerous is because actually submitting to all of that is, is the way that we honor God. Because yes. when, we, when we are critical of leadership, and it doesn't mean that we can't have dialogue. and all, We're not Absolutely. talking, about, I'm but, talking but, about I'm talking about that critical spirit. Yeah, when we have that spirit like that, what we're really saying is, I don't like God's choice. I don't like who God chose to do this. He should have chose me to do it. And... I mean, I, I know, man, this, this conversation needs to be had and heard um, so many times because the way that we teach it here is that God has only created one system in which for your faith to continue, and that system is called fellowship. If you take, if you take the heart out of the body, it cannot exist for long. If you take the plant out of the ground, it cannot exist for long because that's the system that God gave for it. And what are we going to do? And their strength, and one of the things we talk about is, and really for me is, um, my heart is for people. And so when I say, listen, you've got to get, you've got to get plugged into community and family. It's really because as messy as it is, it works. Right. There are blessings and benefits from community. There is strength that comes from community. Absolutely. One of the things we talk about, there's many aspects, but one of them is 
is many times when people are disconnected from community. And, and listen, make no mistake about it. One of the, the enemies, one of his main goal is to get you to disconnect from community. Yeah. Because when you are isolated, you are a massive target for discouragement. Because yeah. one of the main ways we stay encouraged is through community. Wow. But one of the things that gets happened when we get disconnected from community is we, we disconnect ourselves from the voice of God. It's very interesting. It's not the only way he speaks, but if you read scripture, one of the main ways God speaks is through people. Right. It's through people. Right. And so many times people tell me, does God feel silent right now? And I'm like, God's not silent right now. He's speaking through community that you're not connected to. Yeah. So God sticks his voice in that imperfect person and requires you to be in relationship with them to hear what he's saying. We don't like it. It's humbling. And lots of times they don't even say it right all, uh, with the right attitude sometimes. Yeah. But um, that's the but, part for me. And, like, and then yet at the same friend. time, the good news about that is that God will sometimes use you in the community to say a word of encouragement. And how cool is that when you have an unction or, or an inspiration or a leading to, when, when you feel God saying, go to that person and just let them know you love them, encourage them. Or don't say anything. Just put your arms around them. Or they're going through a tough time. Just go over there and tell them you're standing with them. And you don't have to get all up in their business, but just let them know you're standing with them. That's called family. Yeah. That's family. That's how this thing's set up. It's, it's not just me and Jesus. Well, listen, I want to give uh, 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 just a, a break. Then we'll come back for the end of this. this. This great worship song that Kim Walker leads called Your Name is Glorious. Um, man, it had something on it, eh? <laughs> I know. I, I, I felt the same thing. In fact, I told him, I said, this song right here, guys, there is an anointing and a power on this song. Well, we're going to have to let you guys hear this, and I'm coming back with Benning. This is Kim Walker, and your name is glorious. Who is like you took the sin of the world on your shoulders you did it so willingly god the price you paid will forever be enough and the life you gave yeah you gave it all for love your name is glorious we lift you up Fathom 
just right now, just sing out our praise to Jesus. Sing out in your own words, in your own way. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Well, that song was called Your Name is Glorious. And listen, man, how can everybody get a hold of these materials? I mean, I guess they're all on iTunes and in stores or how? No, it, you can buy them all on iTunes and, and Amazon and things like that. If you're digital, obviously iTunes is the easiest. There's also a full length. Um, there's a couple songs, um, videos on the album, but we also have the entire album on a like a movie for like 5.99 or something like that on itunes as well but you have to go to the movie section and then if you still do physical copies you know you can buy it at jesusculture.com slash store yeah. it's there and that has the blu-ray uh that has the blu-ray and with it as well and everybody can find you guys at, on facebook and all that yeah stuff. facebook twitter the big three instagram facebook twitter or jesusculture.com we're on all of those man well we just want to say god bless you and thank you and um what, what's uh, what's on the horizon for you guys? What do you what, what do you see coming down the road? What are you getting ready to do? Yeah, well, we have uh, you know this summer we're doing three conferences. We'll be in Minneapolis, uh, we'll be in Los Angeles, and we'll be in Atlanta. So we've got in, in uh, you know June, July, August we'll do three summer conferences, just going across the nation, gathering with people, excited about those, what's happening, and then we launch the church, man. We launch the church this September. We'll go out and do a few gatherings this fall as well and uh you know some stuff in the uk well, but our, our real focus right now is is uh you know these conferences this summer and then launching this local church that's going to be so awesome and this might be a good moment just to uh, let everyone know that uh, jesus culture is going to be here at cornerstone church on a friday night during our heaven on earth conference and it's going to be crazy it's we're so, be. listen, we're excited to be there. And, and uh, Jesus Culture doesn't go out a lot outside of our events, but, uh, you know, we really feel a great connection with you and, and really are excited to be able to come and partner and invest in what's going on out there. It's going to be awesome. And uh, I'm going to give you the information as to how you can uh, get a hold of your, your information about that. And, um, man, we just love you guys and thank God for you. And it's going to be so exciting. We're going to be, uh, we want everyone to pray for the success and the expansion in Sacramento, we want you to pray for Jesus culture and Banning and his family and everything. And I'm telling you, these are the days when cities can be won and nations can be changed. We just got to get up and do it. We just got to just get up, get up and do it. <laughs> everybody has a key role. So everybody is a critical part of what God intends to do. All hands on deck, right? All hands on deck. <laughs> hey, listen, guys, you've been watching Sundays on Mondays, and so glad that Benning Leapshire was joining with us today. This is cornerstoneglobal.tv. Tell somebody, text somebody, let them know that 24 hours a day, seven days a week, it's all good, it's all God, it's all the time, from wherever we are to wherever you are, all right? Till I see you next time, peace out.